life. You have the breath of life. Mm -hmm. We still have our parents. We still have our, our family members. Amen. I know what it is to lose somebody. But we still have other ones to live for. Amen. When somebody passes on, people will never give up because there's other people that we got to live for too. And then we got to leave a legacy. We got to we got to teach our children, amen? See, that's what church is all about, is to bring our kids, to raise up our kids in the house of God. See, our name is not Jimmy, give me all you can give me. We have to do something for God. We have to leave a legacy. I mean, we got to raise our children in the ways of God. I always say this because maybe we're going to be doing some baptism, I mean, some, uh, some dedications pretty soon because babies are coming in. And I want you to know that when, when you have a baby, it's not your baby. It's God's baby. And God gave you that baby. God gave you that baby for one purpose. To raise that baby in the house of God. To learn about Jesus Christ. Amen. So that baby will have a better life than what the way you did, the way you lived. See, we 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 want to leave, we want to, we want our kids to have better than us. We want them to have good things. We don't want them to go through what we went through. And it starts off in the house of God. When you bring your kids. Amen. They might do the roll of the eyes. They might look at the time. and Well you know what. The word of God never returns void. It will accomplish what it would have been set out to do. God's word will change us. Amen. You know right now I'm kind of calm. And a little bit I'm going to get very excited. You know the way I get right. But let's pray for the offering. Amen. We thank you God once again my God for the seed planted Father. We pray God that every dollar here represent a lost soul Father God. And we thank you, God, that we're seeing results, Father. We thank you, God, that you're bringing your people, my God. They heard your voice today, my God. Even though the parents might have invited them, God. But you whispered in their ears, and they agreed with you, my God, to come to visit your presence, Father. My God, I just want to thank you, God, what you're doing in this ministry, what you're doing in our family, what you're doing in our hearts, what you're doing, God, with our children, God. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, my God, for miracles, breakthroughs, my God. We pray for healings in the church service, Father God. And I pray, God, as we give you our undivided attention, my God, we put the spotlight on you, my God. And it's all about you, not about us, God. It's about you, my God. We give you the glory and the praise and the honor. We thank you, my God. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that protects us from the enemy, Father. Bless this offering. Bless the hand that gave and the hand that wanted to give God but couldn't, God. But God, God, there ain't no partiality with you in heaven, God. You're going to rain down blessings upon your people in their season, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. And they all said, Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to introduce my friend, Tommy. Me and Tommy, we go back from the beginning of time. You know, his son called me up and told me, Randy, my dad's been looking for you. So I got a hold of Tommy. And Tommy goes, bro, where's it been? I've been looking for you for the last eight months. He goes, I go, praise God. And I go, hi. He goes, I want to go visit you. I want to see where you're at. And he showed up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He showed up. Yeah, that's Tommy Case, man. One of my friends from the beginning of time, man. And we're still alive. Awesome. How many of our friends already died? A lot of our friends already died. I mean, we already hit the 60s. We're still alive. A lot of our friends don't even make it to 40 or to even 30. Mm -hmm. But we're still alive. And people, if you're still alive, there's a purpose in the plan for you. And the reason why you're alive is that God has a path for you, a destiny for you. Amen. He has great things for you. Praise the Lord. See, the only thing that God wants to do, people, is bless us. We got it all wrong. We think, oh, going to church is sissy stuff. It takes a real man to serve God. A real man. Or take his family to church. Huh? You know, people, there's a lot of people out there, and me and me and today, they're drinking out there, getting high on the porch. They don't love their family, they don't love God. But when you bring your family to the house of God, you really love your family. You really, because you know what? You're not just concerned about their, their physical body. You're concerned about where's the soul going to go. When you bring your family to church and your friends, your in-laws and your outlaws, you're not just concerned about their outward appearance, you're concerned about their inward appearance. Where are they going to spend their eternity at? Where are they going to spend their destiny at? Amen? Because you're really a true lover of God when you do that. That's what church is all about, people. It's bringing people to get to know Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I took me a while to get a hold of it, man, but I did. And I surrendered to God and 
God gave us a task. And that's what God wants to do to each one of us here. He wants to bless you with a task. So you can say, prepare it. You don't have no time to be backsliding. Huh? See, we, like I said, we have it all wrong. We think that, um, that we can make it on our own. People, even at a young age, you struggle. Yeah, you might have more strength than us, but there ain't no doors opening, and life is hard. Amen? Life without God is hard. It's like a revolving door going in prison, hearing the slamming door all the time. Every month, every day, every year, it's the same old thing. A revolving, slamming prison door, and that's the way life is without God. But with God, there's always something new that takes place every day. There's always something new that takes place. Amen? All of a sudden, you get blessed, man. Why, why did I receive this? Because God loves you. Amen? And like I said, God just wants to bless you. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. You know what? I got a message today. I gave it before, but I broke it down and I turned it around. And you know what? God is always giving us the answers, people, to our life. But we reject the answers because we want to do our own thing. Are we listening? And the title of my message is called, I know you heard, you heard this before. I try to give this message one time a year. It's like I gave Hal last week. What do you want in hell? What do we want in hell? We should have want nothing in hell. But there's a lot of people that's going to burn in hell. And God did not make hell for anybody, but for Satan and the demons. But you know, we say we, have, we don't, we, we, that's not my choice. Well, even though that we don't choose God, we still have a choice. We choose that direction. But God did not make hell for you people or me. He made it for the devil. Amen. So my message is called, The Problem is Not the Problem. Are you listening? You know what the problem is? It's the truth. Are you ready for the word of God? Amen. You better spat in your seatbelts. You're getting ready to take off. Amen. So here's the solution. We're going to go to the word of God in Luke chapter 18. And Luke 18, we're, we're going to remember I was talking about last week. I, I, I like to paraphrase things and I like to throw things in uh, on a Sunday so I can prepare you guys for next week. And I also threw in last week that, remember, it's not a bunch of things that's going to keep us away from God. It's not a bunch of things. It's only one thing that's going to keep us away from God. I will listen. And here this rich um, ruler, this young lad, in Luke chapter 18, verse 18, it says, Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to, to have eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. He said, You know the commandments? Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother. And he said, All these things I have kept from my youth. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, You still lack one thing. So all you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. And come and follow me. But when he heard this, he became very sorrowful, for he was very rich. Amen? And when Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful, he said, How hard is it for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And those who heard it said, Then who could be saved? People of God? This one lad. Follow the word of God. The reason why he got rich? Because he followed the Ten Commandments. Amen? He told the Lord, I did that for my youth. And that's why, because following the word of God, he became a wealthy man. He became rich. But there was only one thing that he still lacked. He had great possessions that he put before God. He didn't have a drug problem. He didn't have an alcohol problem. He had great possessions. But really what it needs to be said, the possessions had him. He had a nice car. He didn't want nobody to go in it. He had a nice house. He didn't want nobody to come over. He had great possessions. So the possessions had him. Jesus told him, there's one thing you lack. Go sell all your possessions and give it to the poor. He couldn't do that. So that one thing that he had, he couldn't give it to God. And God already gave it to him. See, people, so it's not a bunch of things. 
It's only one thing that's going to keep us from God. So we got to examine ourselves and say, what is that one thing? You know, people, when I was going to church back in the days, Pastor Juan and Delano, I used to love going to church. I used to love singing. But I couldn't get dedicated and committed because you know what the one thing I love to do is get high. Get high before church service and come out of church service even in the parking lot and still get high. Huh? I couldn't commit. I couldn't surrender because of that one thing. I wanted to get high. And we know that getting high, there's only one course it does to you. It brings a curse on us. So all through my life that when I was choosing to get high instead of committing to God, my course was a downward spiral. Even though that I've worked all my life, I've worked at Palestine, I Tommy and Tommy with floor layers, a floor lane, but man working paycheck after paycheck, it was a curse, man. Nothing good going. I get paid Friday and all of a sudden I'm broke Saturday, begging for money, asking my friends to lend me money on a Monday. Ruined 1,500 bucks on a weekend. Huh? Because it's a curse when we choose something else. Are we listening? See, with God, even your dog is saved. I remember one time we wanted to get rid of our dog and some of the kids, oh, you know, we, some, of, some of the family didn't want to get, we'd go dump the dog off and the dog came back. <laughs> I remember one time we lost, uh, my wife left her phone in, went there in Valero, we came home and we were gone like an hour. And oh no, where's my phone? Because when you're saved people, everything is saved. And all of a sudden we call the phone, somebody picks it up, yeah, it's right here at Valero. One time I dropped my, my wallet, we were gone like two hours. We, we dropped, we, I, 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 it fell out of my wallet, it fell out of my pocket over there, Daryl's storage. And I'm looking for my wallet because we went to the store. And then, oh no, babe, we lost my, I lost my wallet. Where is it at, babe? Well, the last place you went to Daryl's storage, we go in the door two hours later and it's still there in the floor. <laughs> How many people went in and out and didn't even pick it up? See, people, when you serve God, it's a blessing. Huh? It's a blessing. God takes you to the next level of blessings when you're with the Lord. Amen? See, you, you grow in those areas pace by pace. Amen? You grow into that faith. You trust God. You believe God. Don't listen to nobody. You trust God for yourselves. See, I all used to get my ideas and, and counsel from people. And they're all tore up. And none of the encouragement they gave me never worked. So what happened? I went to the Lord myself. And God began to prove to me by himself that his word is true. And whatever God says in the word, if you obey it, it's going to happen. And there's changes in life. See, people, in order to see things change, you got to make that first step to make that change. Then everything else changes. See, a lot of times we want our wives to change. We want our husbands to change. No, you want to change first. You make that step of faith to change. Then God changes everybody. Amen? Somebody got to kick the devil out of the house. If you want the devil out of the house, then you make that change. You get on your knees and you start talking to God. And God through you will kick out the devil. All of a sudden, they start seeing you going to church. They start seeing the prosperity come upon you. They start seeing the change on you. They start seeing the blessings on you. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to want what you got. And you're going to tell them it's Jesus. And all of a sudden, you give them Jesus. And then they carry on the legacy too. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This one brother today he was talking to me, and I got paid today. I called the Jesus Bucks. He goes, Pastor Randy. That's why I was gone. When you were, you were talking to Sandy, one of the pastors was talking to me outside. He goes, I want to just talk to you. I, I give God the glory. He goes, man, you've been pastoring longer than me, and you're still serving God? I go, yeah, of course. There ain't no other way to go. Huh? See, well, we can't serve God like a, a, a 90-day fiance, fiance program. You know that 90 day fiance? <laughs> you can't serve God for six months. You can't serve God for a year. Serving God is a lifetime, it's forever. But I encourage you people, when you serve God one year, you prove to God one year, serving the Lord the best you can, you're gonna see tremendous changes in life. Because if you can commit your life to God one year, then God's gonna trust you with a good woman and a good husband. Amen? I'm going to, uh, you know, I know I'm saying some other stuff, but let me tell you what people, when God put Adam in the garden, you know the first thing he gave him to do? He gave him a job in the garden. 
to prune the flowers, to prune the trees, huh? to water the garden. You know why? Because if Adam was able to make the garden, the trees bear fruit and make it look beautiful and all watered up, then he was going to be able to make his wife look good. Praise the Lord. God gave Adam a job first to till the ground, to water the land, to prune the trees, to see the fruit blossom. Amen. God brought the animals to give them all names, every insect there is. But we're talking about God gave Adam a job first. Amen. He learned to till the ground. He learned to make the, the flowers beautiful. The, uh, the, the fruit come forth and he pruned this. So when God gave Adam a woman, he learned to make her beautiful. Praise the Lord. Amen. See, God didn't get a woman out of the burning bush. God didn't get a woman at the bar. He didn't get a woman at the bar or the, the drug house. God gave Adam in the presence. God gave Adam his woman in the presence of God. So if you're in the presence of God now, that's the one that God has given you. Amen? Whoever that you have with you now in the house of God, well, that's God in God's presence, and that's the one that God is giving you now. Praise the Lord. In God's house, that's where the goodness comes from. A woman that's been proved already, tried and fired. I already did this and did that. I'm doing that no more. I ain't doing that no more. I'm doing what God said. And a man too. Oh, I already did this. I tried that. I, I went over here. And I'm not going to say the things. You know what I'm talking about. Huh? You know, we went over there in March of Jan and Cindy. We already tried all that. But it don't work. And the one that it's working with is the one named Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we read the, we read the problem. Jesus tells the, the rich man. He said, go sell all your possessions and give it to the poor. And you'll have treasure room with me in heaven because you lack one thing. There was one thing that that rich man had. And what did the rich man do? He bowed his head and he walked away from God. Oh my goodness. You see what the one thing does to us? We're, we become like the rich lad. Huh? We look at Jesus eye to eye. We're looking at Jesus eye to eye. And God is telling you, Go sell. Oh, I already blessed you. Go, 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 go give it away. I'm going to give you some more. Go give it away. Give it to the poor. You don't have treasure with me in heaven. And we become like the rich man. We look at Jesus. We put our head down. And we walk away from God. We walk away from God. We walk away from healing. We walk away from miracles. We walk away from blessings. We walk away from the goodness of God. Every time that we put something else before God, we walk away from it. Huh? And the reason why I'm telling these people is because I have experienced this before. Huh? I'm just a nobody that knows somebody that could change anybody. His name is Jesus. But I have learned people, when we do the best we can, and show God the best effort to put him first. And get rid of the things people. Because remember, in order to gain something, you've got to give up something. Are you listening? In order to gain something, you've got to give up something. If you want to gain Jesus and gain heaven, well, we need to give up whatever's holding us back from surrender, surrendering to God completely. So in order to gain Jesus, his life, then we got to give up one thing. What is the one thing that we go after the most? What do we chase the most? And we're, we're not going to talk about it. We're not, we're not, we're not going to, you know, expound on it and say those things. But I know that what I'm telling you, you, your mind is already picking up the things that we do. That's why we can't surrender. Huh? God wants to give you the best. Some be blessed with 100, some 60, and some 30. Whatever you can handle. Amen? Whatever you can handle. God is it because you're going to be faithful in what he gives you. Praise the Lord. Remember the, the three men? One he gave five talents. He went to go make five more. He, got, he, he came back with ten here, Master. I made five more. And the other one he had three. He went to go double it. huh? And then there, there was another one he gave him one talent. The reason why he gave that guy one talent because he was lazy. He went to go hiding in the ground because he knew that his master was hard. Prophets, wherever he goes. And he goes, could you put in the bank and, and then gain interest? I knew you were a hard man, so I hid it. I was afraid. 
You wicked and lazy servant, take that talent away from him. God don't want to tell us that. See, that person was fearful. One thing caused him to fear, fear man. Huh? He, was, he knew that, that, uh, that he was master was a hard man and he feared him. So he hid it in the ground. The one thing kept him from the blessing. You see? One thing kept him from the blessings. Jesus answers this at verse 22. I'll read it again. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven, and come and follow me. See, people, God is telling us, if we get rid of that one thing, he says, come and follow me. Come and follow me. Make time with me. See, your father in heaven is Jesus. Jesus is God. In his presence, in his house, there's blessings. There's levels. There's life here. There's a river flowing in here. There's goodness. There's greatness. There's destinies. Huh? There's door openings here. There's not just in this church, any spiritual church that believes in Jesus Christ and has faith in him and believes that what he says is going to do then God has that for them in that church. But in his presence, people, there's great things of your desires in his presence. And we don't get them. You know why? Because we don't come. But you came today. So your blessing starts today. What you did yesterday, he don't even remember it. He don't even remember it. He don't even know it. Today he remembers. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with this message? Are you going to take heed? Are you going to listen? Are you going to do the best you can to acknowledge God? God, forgive me my sins. See, what God is looking for people is effort. Effort. Effort to change. If you smoke three packs of cigarettes a day and you're down to two cigarettes a day, that's effort. You're on your way to a true deliverance. If you're drinking a case a day and you're down only one beer a day, that's effort, huh? You're showing God that you do want to change. <clears throat> if you have a bad mouth and every, every second, every, every word is a bad mouth and you're trying not to uh, cuss anymore, you're on your way to deliverance. You're showing God effort. You do want to change. See, that's what God makes God happy is effort. You're trying to change. Huh? You're trying to change. You're trying to do good. You want to go to heaven. You want to fear God. You don't want to go to hell. You want to make it to heaven. And when you show him that, it begins to draw you closer to him. People, you know a bow and arrow? The power, the power of a bow and arrow is not in letting the bow go. The arrow bow. The power of the bow and arrow is in the pullback. Right, Tommy? Mm -hmm. The bow and arrow is in the pullback. God pulls you back to him. He takes you away from the hands of the devil. You're an arrow. That's why the Bible says that your grandchildren are the arrows in the quiver. You know that quiver back there where it holds all the arrows? Well, those are the grandkids. You know that quiver, that thing that holds all the arrows. Your grandkids and your babies are the arrows in the back of the quiver. And what you do, and, and, the, and the, uh, the, how you call those archers, they pull the arrow out and they shoot it at the target. So us grandparents are the ones that are going to shoot our children, our grandkids, and the target where God wants them to go. Are you listening? So it's the pullback. The pullback of the bow. Well, God pulls you back to him in the house of God. And then he lets you go whoo, to the direction he called you to go to. Amen? Right. I'm going to put you in this job that you could be a NASA to me. That you could tell all those people in the boss and the owner about me. Whoo, let you go. And all of a sudden you want the boss. You want people to God because he brought you back. So he can shoot you in that direction. Amen? Amen. Thank you. for the only one clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's the problem. You still lack one thing. Like I said, what is the one thing that's holding us back? Oh, there go. I got an example right here in, uh, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. It says, this is the word of God. I wrote them down already. It says, brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have overtaken hold of it. But one thing I do. But one thing I do, Paul says. Forgetting what is behind 
and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize of God's heavenly calling in Christ Jesus. That one thing, people, that will have us bound is a pass. Huh? You know why I say that? Because I still have family members that still hold on to the past. I'm going to tell you something, people. If somebody offended you, it hurts you, physically, mentally, abusively, I don't care what sin it is, you got to forgive them. Amen? When Christ died on that cross, he died for every sin that we do. Every nasty, evil sin. You know when you're on meth, meth, that is the most nastiest drug ever. It is nasty. And I don't know when you say the things that you do on that spell. God forgave us of those nasty spells. Being on coke, being on alcohol, abuse and fighting and cussing. God forgave us of those things. We put them on the cross. Our sins nailed, nobody nailed him but himself. Because our sin drove him to the cross that we could make it to heaven. And he said he forgave us, then we have to forgive everybody. And the Bible says this this, this, this is why I wrote this today. There's some of my family members, they can't forgive. Ten years ago, 15 years ago. Huh? And you know what happens when we don't forgive? The Bible says that God will release us to the torturers. The demons. Huh? That we don't forgive. The Bible says, before you leave your gift out the altar, go back to your brother and forgive them. Then come back and leave me your gift. Come back and I'll forgive you and bless you. That's what he's saying. But if we don't forgive, Father God cannot forgive us either. Come on now. Praise the Lord. Amen? So remember, people, the one thing, too, that's the one thing. If we... If we if we want to go to heaven, we got to forgive. Because one thing, in the church today, and a lot of Christians, uh-uh, I ain't going to forgive him. He molested me. I love God, I love everybody else, but not him. I hate him. He molested me. Well, you can't go to heaven if you can't forgive him. Huh? You don't have to associate with him. You can stay at a distance, but you got to forgive him, no matter what, because God forgave us. For every secret sin that we do, huh? For every nasty secret sin that we do, God forgave us. So why can't we forgive our brother or forgive our sister? Amen? It's always one thing. I need everybody's undivided attention. Or else I'm going to linger. I'm going to repeat myself. If we have everybody's cooperation and listening to me, I'll flow through this without stopping. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. That's the first page done. Today, many Christians have a lot of questions. Questions about family. Questions about marriage. Questions about being single. Questions about money. Questions about health. And questions about the future. Today, the church does that. They have a lot of questions. Huh? God has the answers. Amen. God says, here comes the answers. God reveals the answers, and we get upset. Hmm? You know where your answers is at? It's in the living wine. I should drink wine. The wine of the word. Huh? This is the wine of God that I drink. And here's where all your answers. Huh? Oh, but Jesus drank wine in the Bible. Not one time he drank wine. The disciples did because Paul said a little wine for your infirmity's sake, you know, your stomach gets better. But us drunks, <laughs> we can't drink no wine. Not me, huh? An ex-drug addict, an ex-alcohol addict, give me a cup of wine, you might as well bring the case. I've been delivered, huh? I've been delivered 150%. I can't even take a chance to have one little drink, huh? The other day they got me, I did a, I'm not going to say it, there was a job over there where I was at. And this guy gave me a tea, a yellow can tea. He goes, here Randy, here's some tea. And I love tea. My wife makes tea every day. Huh? It was a yellow can. And he over here, this man Randy, you're going to like this tea. And it, it said tea. 
I get that, and I keep my, you know, my drinks is not just a drink. I put it the whole can practically. I, oh, bro, I thought you said this is tea. Six percent alcohol. Huh? <laughs> huh? You know, I you know what that that didn't go down my throat. I spit it out. I said, God, I didn't go in. <laughs> but let me tell you what, people. That one thing that used to destroy me, like I said this last week, was drugs and alcohol. That one thing kept me from the goodness of God. Huh? For my family. Huh? From the blessings of favor. That one thing kept me away from God's goodness. Huh? I remember when I used to drink and smell like and do drugs and I, you know, you know what? When you're sweating all that Clorox shows in your shirt, all the chemicals are coming out, huh? Why well, like, I hate no, you want to be with that? You sleep with that. Huh? I couldn't even sleep with her. I couldn't even lay with it. You wanted to be with that? Well, you sleep with that. Smelling like beer and salad, smelling like drugs and stuff. You be with that. You want to be with that? You see, you sleep with that. You be with that. So I begin to think, I begin to realize, I want you, God, and I want my family. I just want to be in her arms, not even sexual, just be in her arms to lay down. I missed all that. And once I was able to put that other stuff aside, then I was able to do that. Amen? But what I'm saying, people, the one thing, people, could be alcohol or drugs, keep us from God. Keep us blinded. You know why the you know why the Pharisees killed Samson? You know why they blinded his eyes? Because they didn't trust him getting his strength back, huh? They told him, you know, God told him, you know, never put a shave a, a razor to his hair, and he was obedient by him keeping the hair. But he told Delilah the the, the secret, right? But let me tell you, you know why the reason why he blind they blinded him. Because they, didn't, they, they thought that he was going to get his strength back somehow. So if he got his strength, he'll no longer, he'll know, he'll, he had nowhere to see. He, had, he couldn't see where he was going. He couldn't kill the enemy because he was blind. And a lot of times, people, for us holding on to that one thing, we're like Samson being blind, not knowing where we're going. We don't see what's coming. We don't see what's happening, huh? People, you men of God, I challenge you people to put God first, people. You want God in your house? Keep the devil away from your home because he hates you and your family. He hates your wife and he hates your kids and he wants to rape every one of them. And if we're not careful, people, those things could take place. Huh? Are you listening? Bring God in your house. I pray God, Father God, your flag of victory is going to be here in this home today. This home that you have given us, God, your flag of victory lives here, God. My family knows if I'm not drinking, nobody ain't drinking in my house. If I'm not getting high in my house, nobody going to get high in my house because Jesus lives here. He's the king of kings and the Lord. This is his house. He's the manager and the owner, and he told me to take care of it. I don't want to lose it. I want God here because I want my other grandkids to inherit it, the blessings. Amen. I want them to continue on the property or whatever thing that God has blessed us with and we train them up now. The Bible says that you train them a child in the way he should go. When he gets older, it will not depart from him. Amen? Amen. I told you I get a little excited. God says, here comes the answers. God reveals the answers and we get upset. I wrote another verse. Listen to this. And Samuel chapter 15, verse, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 and 23. It says, so Samuel said, as the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, it is better to obey than sacrifices and to heed than the fat of ram. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as the sin of iniquity and idolatry. Hmm? It's better to obey. Are we listening? And when we don't want to obey God, we're not falling to, we're falling to the sins of rebellion. Rebellion. You know what rebellion is? Mom and dad, I don't care what you say. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do what Jay-Z said. Do what I will. Huh? Rebellion. I'm going to do what I, I don't care what you say, God. I don't care what you say, dad and mom. That's the rebellion. 
and it's a downward spiral. Are we listening? See, that's one of the commandments, right? The Bible says to honor thy father and thy mother. And you know what the promise is? You're going to live long on the earth. You know why there are a lot of kids today dead? Huh? A lot of kids are dead today. You know why? Because they don't listen to mom and dad. Well, why should I? They don't live right. The Bible says to still listen to them. Hmm? Even though they might not be serving God the best they can, but still you got to listen to them. Huh? Even though they might be drunk or high, they still got some caring and love in their heart for you. They had you. The Bible, the Bible does not say, oh, you only listen to her if she serves me. The Bible says to honor thy father and thy mother. And the promise, you'll live long on the earth. Amen? That what I was talking to me a little while ago, what all of our friends are dead. Because they didn't listen to mom and dad. They abused them and robbed them and stole from them, huh? Didn't help them in their bills. Didn't even, they got a job. They didn't even help them pay their own bills. The mom and dad took care of them all their life until they're 40, 50 years old. And all of a sudden, they get a job they don't want to help out. Huh? That's not honoring father and dad, mom and dad. They brought you into the world with their strength. Now, if they're old, if you're old, if, if they're old and you're strong, then now you're the strength from them, for them. Amen? Mom, I know you're tired. I, I got you, Mom. I got you, Dad. Huh? You don't have to clean the yard no more, God. I, I got it, Dad. I'm going to take care of business. Huh? Uh -huh. And when you start doing that, God begins to bless you and promote you. See, everything you do for God and your family, people, your dad, your parents, God promotes you. There's blessings. I remember one time, people, when I, when, back in 2004, when I was, uh, when I came, when I, you know, I went through some troubles and I, and I came back to God and, and then 2007 and then 2008 came and, and my wife got an apartment in 2007 over there and I already got my act together in two, early 2008 and I didn't have no job. You know what I started doing? I started cleaning the parking lot. Hey, Randy, you work for the apartments now? <laughs> no, I'm just cleaning it up, bro. Because God owns his apartments. Ah, Randy, come on, that again. I started cleaning up the apartments, picking up papers and stuff. And all of a sudden, I get a call, Randy, come and do a job. Huh? See, a lot of times we want a job, we can't even clean our own room. Huh? <laughs> Mom, what do you want me to do? Is dish is stacked to the ceiling. <laughs> Mom, you, is there anything to do? It's right there in front of you. You don't have to ask Mom and Dad what do you want me to do? You got pot and pan, beans and cheese from two months ago still in the pot. Huh? People will be see the need to meet it. Huh? Huh? Dad comes, dad goes to work all day and he still comes on and has to take out the trash. I'm not talking for me, I'm talking for you men. Kids are playing the game all day and trash to the top of the toilet paper stuck on the wall and stuff. Huh? Yeah, I'm telling you, I've seen that many times. Not in my house. Uh -uh. <laughs> Jesus is the commander. Jesus is the chief. He's the boss. He goes in my toilet bowl. Because huh? I pray in that toilet bowl. I read that, I read that Bible for hours on that toilet bowl. Want to see my time schedule? 3.30 in the morning. Huh? He goes with me in that toilet bowl. Huh? Two and one. Use it and read the word at the same time. Huh? <laughs> but uh, let me tell you what, people. God is so good. I can't even wait for tomorrow. But you know, I know what Sandy tells me. Randy, yesterday's history, today's a, a blessing, and tomorrow's a miracle. But I already know something's going to take place tomorrow. huh? Mm -hmm. I can't even wait tomorrow for tomorrow because I already know something good is going to take place. Mm -hmm. huh? I already know. I already know that today's something good is going to take place. huh? I know after I get out of church, I'm going to be good. <laughs> Not cheese, all kind of extra cheese and stuff. <laughs> We're the cheese church. <laughs> even my dogs love cheese. If my wife won't put cheese on the dog food, they won't even eat. She gets that cheese and she cheddars that, gets that shredder and sh cheddars that cheddar cheese. And I was like, boom, my dog's cheered up. Those dogs are horses. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So by not obeying and taking heed, God, okay, look, for, Sa for, uh, for Saul, King Saul, I just, I just tell you what ha happened. God told, God told Samuel to tell King Saul because the Israelites, they, they wanted, they wanted a, a, a king. So God gave him a king. He told him he's going to take your taxes away, he's going to charge you this, he's going to charge you that, and I'm just paraphrasing. 
You want a king, you don't want the prophet, you don't want the word of God. Well, you're going to get a king and you're not going to like it. And then he got Samuel, God told Samuel, tell King Saul to go kill every enemy there is. Go kill all the enemies. Everybody. We don't want no enemies to live because of bringing the breach to the next generation. Listen to this. See, people, the reason why we have to do this, we need to kill the enemy. Don't let the enemy stay in your house because you got loved ones that are coming up. And what you get, they're going to be ten times worse than you. And if you can't even stop yourself, you're not going to be able to stop your kids. God, don't kill all the enemy. Are you listening? And what did King Saul do? Listen, people. King Saul, seeing the best woman, kept them alive. Got all the gold and all the silver and all the, you know, the treasures, kept it. Huh? And then he spared the king. And for him doing that, for being disobedient, God rejected him from being king. People, when we don't obey the voice of the Lord, God has to reject us from anything that's good. Huh? God has rejected us from being a good parent. God has rejected us from being a good leader. I was listening. And this is the key. I know that all of us already have experienced it. We went through something. Huh? But God is telling us to come back. That he'll give you back your destiny. Amen? I was saying, um, I, I got to say this. I have to say this. I said this before. The one thing that could destroy our, our time in, in God's house, I'm gonna have to say it. I don't take it personal. I mean, my wife talked about this the other day. We know the sports is fun. There's a lot of sports fans here. Your favorite team is playing. But when we decide to put that before God, that's the one thing that could hold us back. People miss church because of the football game, huh? And I said this last week, people, Back in the days of the Empress and the Colosseums, they still have the Colosseums. They have Raider Colosseums in Las Vegas. They have San Francisco Colosseums. They have Dallas Colosseums. They have all kinds of Colosseums for every team. The Emperor is still in charge of the Colosseum, right? And what happens? You got everybody involved in the game, you know why? So we don't know what's going on. We're focused on the game instead of what God has for us. Are we listening? The emperor is still in control of the people. He's got their minds focused on a game instead of what's really happening. Huh? People, Israel is your time clock. Whatever happens to Israel happens to you. Are you listening? But we don't even know what's going on today in Israel. We believe the fake news on TV. You want to have real news? The Word of God is your real news. Amen? Everything else is a lie. It's fake. You can sell, you can sell bad news, but you can't sell good news. So they sell bad news. They, we can't wait till 5 o'clock to the news. People, this is the only good news that you've got that's really going to get you somewhere is the Word of God. Amen? I'm almost done. <laughs> When I'm talking about what I find out today, the problem is the problem. The problem is the answer. The problem is the truth. Some of, some of us people are not tormented with, or not possessed with demons, pimps, or rims. We're possessed by the truth, people. The reason why I'm saying that because a lot of times we're not tormented. We're not. We're not tormented because we got high. Oh man, I jacked up. We're not even tormented. Ah, oh, I just don't do it tomorrow. Oh, I'll be all right. We're not tormented by that. We're, torment, we're tormented because we let God down. We're tormented because, you know what, we, we, we're not uh, raising our family in the house of God. We're not tormented because we know that we should be in church. We're tormented because we know that there's a heaven and there's a hell. We're tormented because of God's truth, his word. We're not tormented by other things. Oh, she let me all by myself. I'm going to be, you're not tormented by that. We're tormented because of the truth. The truth is, is to serve God with all your heart, to love the Lord God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might, with all thy strength. And second is to love thy neighbor as thyself. 
We're tormented with that because we don't do it. You're never going to be the same, people. After this message, you're never going to be the same. You might not pray tonight or go to church next week, but this word, is always, this word, the Spirit of God is always going to remind you what you heard. You'll never be the same. Matter of fact, everybody here is already saved. These kids, all these kids already gave their life to the Lord 10 years ago. Everybody in this house already gave their life. The babies are God's babies. We pray for them already. Everybody in the, and God is bringing his people back. These kids were coming to church when my wife had 50 in a class. They're only this big. Remember, guys? Look at them now, bigger than me, taller than me. Good looking men. Huh? All with their family. Man, they packed out the church. Look at this whole front. It's all one family. And there's still more. Glory. Hmm? Psalms 55 22 says, Cast your burden. See, we don't do these things. The Bible says, Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Here's the problem we don't cast our burdens to God. We don't. We throw it at each other. See, baby, you never want to work, you don't want to do nothing. The bills are getting the bills. The guard paying the insurance. Cast your burden on the Lord. But we throw it at each other. You don't know what a husband or wife is going to. You don't even know if they want to just stay home because they're being abused mentally and physically at the job. You don't know what they're going through. Cast your burden on the Lord. Don't throw it at each other. Because when you throw it at each other, you be, the fights create. Huh? Praise the Lord. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Father, bless it with favor. Bless it with God. I decree. I decree. This, is my, this is my prayer for my wife. My God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I apply the blood of Jesus upon my wife right now, Lord God. Sanctify her. Deliver her. Set her free, my God. And my God, I decree and I declare favor upon my wife, my God. That prosperity will follow her, God. And God, when she's on the road, God, picking up the kids or taking them to school, God, protect her on the road and on those people on the road as well, Father. My God, I pray, God, for a blessing to chase after my wife, God. Let my wife live for many years to come, God, that she can see four generations of her grandkids living, Father. Bless her with goodness and greatness, God. I thank you, God, in Jesus' name. And they all said, Amen. You got to bless them that way. You bless them that way. You don't, you don't, you don't, if you see your husband, you fat and lazy pig. Huh? Huh? Bless your husband. Huh? Bless him. You're going to lose weight, babe. <laughs> babe, let's go walking around the block. My wife tells me that I get that wheelchair, that motor, that motorized wheelchair, I follow her around the block. That <laughs> could have had to be that was a good workout. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So here's the problem. We don't cast our burden to God. We throw it at each other. Nothing but fights, fights, fights. And God says, cast your, look, I'm going to read it again. Cast your burden. You know what a burden? It's a load. It's a load, a heavy load. Cast your burden. Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. Huh? If you give it to God, he's your father, he's going to sustain you. You're going to be able to make it. All of a sudden, the PG PG and E man's coming to uh, coming to turn off your power, and all of a sudden, he gets a phone call and takes off because somebody paid your bill, huh? At the last moment, because he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be moved, forsaken, or be moved. Amen. God got your back, people. You're on the winning team. It's a fixed fight. Praise the Lord. Psalms one nineteen forty three says, "Trouble and anguish have overtaken me." Yet your commandments are my delights. See, when you obey God's commandments, they become delights. People, I love to come to church. Raul calls me up, Pastor Randy. Um, do me a favor. Yeah. He never calls me up or nothing. <laughs> come pick me up. Praise the Lord. I can probably go early. Yeah, let's go. Huh? We can get here early. I love to be in God's house. Huh? It's depressing for me not to be in God's house. Oh, you have to, Pastor Randy, because you're obligated. 
I'm not obligated. I don't have to come. But I come even though we have other preachers here. We raise other pe people to preach here. And I love to come and I love to listen. Because I love to see the work of God, what God's doing in their lives. Amen. And God speaks to them. Because I need help too. The reason why I come to church, bro, because I already know me already. If I don't come to church, I'm going to start going somewhere else. Huh? If I don't come to church, people, I, I'm, I'm a bad boy. Very bad. And my family will tell you the person that I used to be. Huh? People in my days, there wasn't one cop pulling me over. There was 20 to 30 cops. Three canine dogs trying to bite me and take me down. Get the dog out my <laughs> Picking them up and slamming them. Huh? You ever got sprayed with a pepper spray? Huh? Huh. You want to know the pepper spray they use on me? That's a big old fire hydrant. Big old cone that big. <laughs> huh? And I'm like that, blocking it. And they put the report that I'm trying to do a chokehold on the cop. I'm trying to block the pepper spray. Huh? I'll kind of 20 cops hitting me in batons. My, the bruises on my body were big as footballs. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? And the report says, he didn't even cry or scream. He didn't even, he didn't even go out. Huh? Being on that PCP, you don't feel nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, all the cops are sweating. They're burning with pepper spray. They're burning up and I'm burning up and you know, clean all up. I'm all wet, drenched. My wife's trying to come and save me. They're backing her up with a baton. Get back there, who are you? Hitting her in the chest. And all of a sudden I see there was a big old lady, a big old sheriff lady that I, that I noticed that she was not there. And then when everybody was resting, everybody was tired. <sighs> They're hitting me a bunch of times, people. All of a sudden I was looking around for that lady sheriff and I didn't see her. And all of a sudden, boom, I got hit in the back. This lady, sheriff, this big old 250 pound sheriff lady, probably went a half a block away and ran in full force like a freight train. Huh? And she was the only one to get me down. She got me down and they all, they all got me. They all got me. Huh? They hogtied me. They hogtied me like a real pig. They hogtied me. They, they, they didn't find handcuffs big enough. They used zip ties. That long. They hogtied me. And they were laying another canine bite me in the back. <laughs> and I look at them, I never forget a face. Still with pride. Huh? But the reason why I'm seeing this, after the whole incident, after everything was. The courts apologized, they got the wrong guy. <laughs> My name is Randy Forrest, I'm not Raymond Sanchez. They got the wrong guy. I'm not going home. But I'm all okay, get out saying, he's the king of kings and the lord of all. Oh, you know, they said I was singing a song. Anyways, <laughs> after the whole thing, after after thing, everything was done and said, I went I went to jail, came out, huh, got bailed out, went to court and apologized, we got the wrong guy, we're sorry. To I bruised all over my body. God spoke to me and said, Randall, it was not the cop's fault. It was your fault for not leaving with me. Being disobedient to rebellion. That's what happened. It was your fault. It wasn't the cop's fault. It was my fault. So you know what, people? Yes, that happened to me, but it was my fault that that happened to me. Because I was not living for the Lord. I was not protecting my wife and children. And that what I had coming. People, life is hard. It's ugly. It's ugly. And prepare yourself to face those kind of things in the future if you choose that route. But the bad thing is now they're just James cops. They'll shoot you dead. Right? Yeah, then they shoot you, they go. <laughs> I got him good. Hmm? <clears throat> okay, I'm almost done. Because you guys got 30 more minutes? I got to give you two hours of your day, brother. Amen? See, people, to serve God, you got to give God your 10% of your time. It's two hours a day. Remember, 
From 12 midnight to 12 o'clock in the afternoon is one hour. From 12 o'clock in the afternoon to 12 o'clock midnight is another hour. So if you give God your two hours a day like in church today, you give God your exact time of your 10%. Amen? So pick yourself in the back. Hey, you did good. Praise the Lord. I like to say this. The problem is not the problem. The problem is the truth. Here's the, the, here's the church problem. Problem one. Let me give you these real quick. I'm almost done. Problem one. We are bothered and tormented because God is saying, get committed and dedicated to my church service. Pray, read my Bible. And we say, I don't have time. Problem. That's happening all the time. I invite people to church. I don't got time, Randy. When you're on the rest, you got time. When you're driving to work, you have time. Hmm? Problem two. God says you want to have confidence in me. We say how. God says don't put your trust in man or your woman. We have our trust in our husband and our wife more than God. You gotta put your total confidence in God. I got verses for that too, but I'm just trying to finish it quick. Number three, God says, I will bless you with a godly husband or a godly wife that's been approved already. We say, no, God, I want this lady because I met her at the pot shop. I met her at the bar. People, when you marry somebody that you found at the bar, he was nice looking, big hairy chest, or nice beautiful legs and sexy at the bar. You marry the bar. Are you listening? You marry whatever they, their, their life was in the bar. Are you listening? Huh? God wants to give you something great. And if you have somebody now, don't go dumping her. Now you got to put up with her. Or you got to put up with him. God will fix them. Huh? It's not good to start all over. Be thankful what you have now. Fight for your marriage. Huh? A lot of times we get involved with somebody, and, and three months we and, and three months we want to divorce them already. And then we get involved with somebody, and we start mad. I should have stood with the first one. Huh? I should I should have stood with the one I just left. Huh? You see? For God said, you want your problems fixed. God says, put me first and come to my house. We say, no, God, I'm going to the beach today. Huh? I would listen. Let's give God some of our time, man, in his house. Can't be going to the beach every week. Huh? Oh, we're going to barbecue today. Bar barbecue yesterday. Why, how come you couldn't have fun yesterday and Saturday? Oh, because my family's coming over. Exactly. That's what the enemy does to distract you. He wants to take your time from you. You take your blessing from you. People invite me all the time in my family. Huh? They go. We're having a party uh, at 11 o'clock. You know, it's going to be all day at my house. What day is it? Sunday. I can't go, bro. I can't go. Why? Church, uh, church gets all mad at me. Of course. I'm going to be in God's presence, bro. Huh? Well, somebody needs to do that, people, to bring in your other family. The reason why we remain coming to God, people, because I have a lot of family that's not saved, man. I have a lot of family that's not saved that I still need to pray for, man. Because I care for them. I love them. I think about their destiny. I don't want none of my families to die. Even though they give me so much excuses and this and that, and I still keep on praying for them because I want them to come to heaven. I want them to make it to heaven. I want them to be blessed. Somebody has to make a stand and pray the family in. And if you have family people, God gave you that family to pray them in and bring them into the things of God. Don't quit on them. That's one of the that's one of the, the areas of life that people are, are, are going to stand before God because of being a coward. There's going to be people that's going to fight for our family and bless them, amen? Bring them to church. Get them involved in the things of God. Praise the Lord, I'm almost done. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you, God, once again, my God, for your goodness, my God. 
We pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, my God, that if there's anything, my God, that we put before you, Father. Because, God, we don't want that one thing, my God, to come into our life, my God, that's going to distract us, my God, that we not make it to heaven, Father. My Jesus Christ, right now, I plead your blood upon each one of us, Father God. And I pray, my God, that you'll raise up men and women, God, that will make a stand for you, my God, to bless you, my God, and live for you, my God. So they can raise our families in the ways of God. I want every eye closed and every head bowed, and I just want to ask you from where you're at to make a stand, to stand up right now that we can say this prayer if you really want Jesus. If you want the blessings of God, I encourage you right now to stand up. Amen. We're going to say a prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. I want everybody to say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Right now I confess that I'm a sinner. Right now I confess that I'm a sinner. I apologize, sir. I apologize, sir. For my behaviors. For my behaviors. My attitudes. My attitudes. That what I did in your eyes. And what I did in your eyes. Forgive me, Lord. Have mercy upon my soul. I do believe that you died on the cross and you rose on the third day. I also believe that you went to hell and took away the keys of took away the keys away from Satan. Did I not go to hell? Jesus. I give you my past, my, past, my, present, my present, and my future. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit as, I as I discipline myself to not sin, to not sin keep me disciplined, Jesus, that I will please my Lord and Savior. Jesus, Jesus I love you, and I thank you for giving me another chance, another opportunity to be your son and daughter. I thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. We all said, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, praise God.